Hello farmers, welcome back to Gold Chris Valley for the last time, at least in this field, picking up the grass. I actually had Franco, well Franco's the one that showed up. He's been down in the silo bunker in the 8230, compacting all this grass that we mowed, and did a really nice job actually. Uh, it's kind of weird though, he only seemed to work one side of the silo bunker, but hey, he got the job done. The one thing that didn't work for me uh, on course play for compacting the grass in the silo bunker I double checked it and I had it so the worker was supposed to park at the starting position or whatever it says when I entered the silo bunker and Franco did not want to cooperate in that style so uh, I keep I kept having to stop the worker so I can get in there and dump off the grass but anyways all the grass is picked up uh, missed a few bits and bobs here but this field is ready to be planted with some corn there is rain on the way that should not be here until one so I'm playing at one times the speed to get some of this work done um, but in between episodes as obviously you can tell I got the grass fields cut I did go ahead and cut the alfalfa field which is the smaller of our two fields over there and I need to cut the clover at some point because I need to make some hay uh, I cut down some trees as well because I was trying to find a way to get up to the hundred ninety thousand dollars I need for the grass field that's in front of us and I think what we're going to end up doing is this chaff here that's going to be turned into silage in one month time. I think we're going to go ahead and just sell the silage when it's ready. Instead of bringing it up to the BGA, processing, processing into methane, and then on over into electricity. Because that's going to take a while. If everything goes well, uh, we usually get about $100,000 for the silage in this bunker. But as I'm seeing, I'm about 30,000 liters short than normal. Uh, but then again, the grass field we just left, that field right there is kind of low on the pH value side. So that's probably where some of the loss is. But yeah, if we get 100,000 for this silage tomorrow in the month of um, May follows April. Uh, <laughs> and of course we get the money from the power company overnight. I think we'll be fine in the sense of having $190,000. Of course, if something doesn't come up for sale, that would really need, but I think the grass field is more important. Now, the only thing that's going to kind of suck is I'm going to have to return the mower set overnight because I can't, I can't have, uh, you know, three lease items. So I need the belt for the BGA. Uh, I'm going to need a water tanker. And of course, I got the front and rear mowers. So something's got to go. So I think it's going to be going to have to be the mowers. Maybe I could keep the butterfly mower and, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's, I'm overthinking it. We'll just go ahead and do it that way. And then uh, when we buy the grass field, well, I probably won't be able to mow it right away anyways because I'll have to prep it, uh, you know, get some soil sampling in. Probably spread some lime on it, some fertilizer, get the use out of that field. I don't know why I keep coming in that way. It keeps spilling on out. So I'm just better off not even worrying about that little extra piece right there. All right, 100% compact. Let's go ahead and cover this up. Perfect. This is all set. This needs to go back up to the BGA at some point to go ahead and keep putting silage that's up there into the BGA to be processed to methane. You know the process and all that. All right, now we're going to go grab the planter. Now, some of the money, I was up to about 104000 I think it was somewhere around there at the end of the last episode. I had to buy some silage additive for the forage wagon. Uh, I went ahead and bought some liquid fertilizer for the planter that we we're ready to fill. Uh, when I hired a worker, when I hired Franco for the silo bunker, he repaired the 8230. So, you know, overall we're back down to 95,670, which is not too bad. All right, hopefully the planter is all set and can fill up with liquid fertilizer. If it doesn't, then I got questions. I mean, it should, right? Yes, yeah, so I can't figure out unless the fill point on the mod is the same for seed and fertilizer. So when I go up to the seed hut, it's just going to, you know, it's going to fill the seed first, probably, like it did. And then I can't find the trigger for the fertilizer because it keeps trying to fill up a seed. Not that big of a deal. Uh, let's see. Let me flip this on over to corn. 
and it's time to help out this field a little bit. Yeah, the rain should be here at one o'clock. Uh, but this field here for precision farming, I, I still don't remember not, I, I swear I drilled this field once. What's the second one? Oh, pH value, yeah, the pH value sucks. We need to take care of that. Uh, maybe get the Breedle spreader, and when I buy the grass field next month, we'll take care of some of uh, the pH values around here. I think you're turning, you are. and unfold this and I'll probably buy seed at the store because after we get done with this we'll hire a worker to plant the sunflowers in that field over there oh yeah I did plant the soybeans in that field right there behind us that was quick and easy about five passes and we were done let's go ahead and lower this on down turn her on And we're going to have ourselves a nice little cornfield this year. But well, looks like we'll be harvesting the corn. I don't think we'll be getting into a forage harvester and doing chaff and bring that up to the BJDB process. Um, a miracle is going to have to happen money-wise for that to happen because a forage wagon, uh, sorry, forage harvester is expensive. Even if it comes up for sale, it's going to be like, you know, $190,000, something like that. And we're not going to have the cash by then. Unless by some miracle the power plant really kicks in and does something miraculous. But I think the power plant is doing what it's doing. But I think, I think that's our best plan to get the grass field tomorrow is to sell the bunker that we just covered and sell that silage tomorrow. Price won't be the best, of course, as we know. You know, December, January is the time to sell the silage, but... Um, the sooner I buy the, that grass field, the sooner I can benefit from it. And the loss from selling the silage at the peak time or turning it to methane, then power, um, I'll earn more money by getting the grass field sooner rather than later. Now, as for the logs I cut down, I cut down a good amount, maybe a trailer load. And then when I was cutting the trees down, I'm like, okay, I got like 30,000. I need about 100,000. And uh, that's when I, when I came, I was taking turns from cutting down trees and picking up grass. And that's when the thought came to me, like, wh why don't I just sell the silage? Instead of trying to get, you know, squeeze every penny I can out of it, which would be the wise thing to do if I could. But yeah, we need, we need the money now. We can't, we can't really wait. But then I tried to think of how I could keep the mowers and, and you know, and I was like, that, that's not going to work. I can't get that to work. It's kind of weird because for a while, uh, when we began the series, it was, you know, five items at a time, least max. And we did all right. We didn't really, ha we didn't really struggle to figure out how to do it. And then even when I went down to three for a long time, it was like, yeah, we can, it's manageable. And now I'm in the situation that I'm in and it's like, uh, okay, now I'm back to playing do -si do with the implements and what we have. And I think once we, uh, we will be getting a forage harvester at some point in the series. And once we do that, we'll probably get rid of most of the grass fields. If not all of them, and just do like corn chaff. It'll be a little bit easier. I say easier, but I think it will be quicker that way. At least I think it will. See, I am chewing through the liquid fertilizer. I've already used a quarter of it. I mean, that's fine. I got more over at the store. And let's buy some more if I need to. But you can see where the fertilizing state was and where we need to be. So corn needs a lot. Now, the one thing I will have to do when planting corn, after we harvest it, the field's going to need to be plowed. So I'll, I'll have to lease a plow at some point. And that's fine because that could be a, a you know, one-day lease and return. I don't think I own a plow. We did sort of at the very beginning was that three meter wide plow that could also plant grass, oil seed, and canola. But we got rid of that a long time ago. And I don't think I would want to plant a field like this with a three meter wide plow. Especially with the equipment that we got now, we could pretty much go with any plow that we desire. But yeah, that's, I think that's where, uh, that's where we kind of stand currently here in Goldcrest Valley. But we will sell those logs today. Uh, we're going to get the 
clover field mode. That's the one up by the sheep. And we're just going to let that sit there. I'll probably do the hay in the month of May. So, I mean, like I said, the alfalfa field's cut. The grass or the alfalfa is just sitting there in the field. And we'll get the uh, clover field cut today as well so I can return the mowers. And now leave me with just the belt leased. And then I'll have to go ahead and lease the water tanker again for the sheep. Got to keep giving them water. Constantly, I got to give those sheep water. We'll keep our eye on the sheep as well when they're worth a thousand dollars. Let's go ahead and sell them, let them reproduce, and uh, yeah, we'll keep making money on them like we did in Solyndra, which is where we did that. I hesitate in doing on selling the sheep just because every time I sell the sheep, I feel like, well, that's wool I'm not going to get produced for about a month. But really, for the amount of wool that one sheep probably produces in a month before I get another uh, newborn in the sheep pen, selling the sheep for a thousand per, it's probably going to make us more money that way. And that's the whole, the whole goal here in Goldcrest Valley. I think once we buy the other grass field, we're going to be doing really, really good money-wise. It's just a matter of keeping the ball rolling. And of course, I just spent. Uh, let's see, 200, 350, about $450,000 between the BGA power plant and transformer oil to get that up and running. In the long run, we should make money on it. I haven't really done the math, but you would hope that we make money on it. <laughs> right, so we halfway done with this field. Almost. So yeah, probably going to have to go top off with some liquid fertilizer in a little bit but once I get done with this I'll do a couple of uh, quick headlands on that field there by those trees with some flowers that's what's going there and we'll get uh, one of the Franks to come on over and plant that while we go cut some grass or clover I'd like to get this done in one more pass uh, I had to buy more fertilizer and while I was there I topped off the planter with some seed because I figured you know we're gonna need it for planting some flowers anyways and it's not like I'm never gonna use seed so spend in more cash but it's been a while since we've actually done some corn in the early days of hinterland uh, of course we did some but uh, yeah I really haven't harvested corn in a while it seems like and some flowers have been I think even longer could be mistaken I'm trying to think if I've done any sunflowers recently and I don't you know I can't think of off the top of my head well, it's like this planter was made for this field almost the perfect width and before I send a worker off on that field right there we'll go back to the store we'll top off with fertilizer and seed and we'll get the clover field mode just before the rain hits I hope uh, forecast is 1 o'clock, uh, but my forecast always seems to be off by about 15 minutes to an hour sometimes. But we get done what we get done. I think I can still cut grass in the rain. I don't know if I lose yield on it, and I don't want to do that because I need all the hay for, of course, feeding the sheep and the cattle. The moo-moos. Which I could bring up the manure and start making uh, that manure in the methane and digestate. But seeing that the power plant is not keeping up currently with what we have, it's not much of a rush. That might be a good product to bring on up during the winter months. When we don't have uh, any grass or silage being made, we can bring the manure up and keep that power plant up and running. Yeah, it's best to wait for this planter to fold on up instead of keep trying to drive with it while it's folding up. And, of course, each little wheel's got to come up. Let's go top this off with what it needs. Uh, we'll switch this over to sunflower. I am going to double check on the crop rotation to make sure that's what should be going there. Do not enter. Well, since I'm the only one that goes in and out of here, I think we're fine. Hopefully that's a full... Yes, okay. I want to make sure we get full there. Although I hate leaving the uh, ICBs around and seed bags. Probably should actually... Well, if I put another seed hut up here, I'll have the same problem as I do back 
at the, the farmyard to where I can't fill this up with liquid fertilizer because the trigger is probably trying to fill it up with some seed. All right, up over the curves because I can. Gone wayside by that rule by not going over the curves, but it's all fine. So while this is unfolding, let me just double check here. So it was oats and soybeans, oats and soybeans, oats and soybeans. Oh, did I decide on canola? I thought it was sunflower. Yeah, we're going to go with sunflower. I mean, canola would be the best option. Uh, but we're here with the planter, so we're going to put sunflower in and make it a different crop. Uh, oh, yeah, did our score change over in this field here? There we go. Direct drilling's down nice and full, so we're good there. Why is this rating? Oh, pH value and nitrogen's terrible. This field is perfect. Why is this? Fe these fields should be kind of like together. Why is that? I mean, these were separate fields and we merged them together. I'm just trying to figure out why... Wait, did I merge these fields? I can't remember now. It's actually been a while. Like I said, we've been here over three months now, so... I would assume, since there were different numbers, that uh, they were separate fields at one point. Okay, let's back on up here. And let's go ahead and get ourselves a course plate worker. Field work. Uh, yes, uh, this field here. And you go that way. Uh, number of headlands, two. Working with, I think we'll keep it the way it is. I think it's all good. Figure out the course. Some flowers, yes. We're all good. And I always get the worker going that way. I know they're on the right course. And, oh yeah, two you're going to fix the vehicle. Eh, it's Frank. Well, we'll see how he gets along here. All right, we need to get into the 8230, and we need to get to work. Well, we've been working, but I need to get to work on getting that field cut, and then I'll return the mowers. I keep trying to think how to keep the mowers, but I think it's just better off at this point. Overthinking it too much, probably. Return the mowers. I mean, I don't want to say it only costs 4000 to lease them again, but if I keep one of them overnight, maybe I can uh, reduce that quite a bit. I mean, if I would have returned one of the mowers, like the front mower would be the option because it's cheaper to lease. The butterfly mower would be the best one to keep. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll return the front mower and see if I can at least keep the rear mower. But the that would really kind of suck if by tomorrow I can't afford the other grass field and I kept the mower for no reason. And as you can see... This grass, I keep saying grass, uh, this alfalfa was already cut, and we did widespread, of course. So now it's just baking in the sun. I still got to tet it and everything. Grab that. Grab that. And yes, I am going to drive right over the railroad tracks. That's what you do with your farming equipment. I don't know, maybe some farmers do. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll start over here. And lower that down. Fire it up. And that is already lowered. And fire it up. So, yeah, as for the stocks looking kind of tall... They stay that way, so as we got told a while ago, yeah, we got to mulch the fields after we're done with it. Not a rush to do it because it takes a long for the crop to actually start regrowing. So it's not like I got to, it's not like the grass field where it's like cut, get everything off, and get the fields all set because every three months those grass fields are ready. This is a, you know, one harvest crop per year. So not a rush to get back in here and get the work done. But the sheep and the cows will be happy to have some hay bales. And let me go ahead and we'll get the headlands done. If I get a little bit of grass mixed in, it's fine because it'll all get converted on over to clover anyways. 
At least it has been. And then once we get this turned over to hay, we'll have to lease the uh, hay baler, baling trailer, the one we've been using. Now, part of me is, you know, can't wait to check the store page to see what's for sale. But the issue is, we need to save the money for the grass field. So, and I think the grass field is more important in a sense. I hate to say it's more important than what comes up for sale because there's been a few items that we would have liked to have gotten before. And it's like, well, we don't need it now. We'll wait for it in the future. And those items that have not come back up for sale since. So, yeah, sometimes hoping. Actually, I probably, when I get a plow. make the field more like this so it makes it more easier to to cut I'm not too concerned if uh, some of this gets turned over to grass because when I was doing a little bit of research on the alfalfa and clover it just treats it just like grass so even though it's titled differently if it gets converted over to grass or vice versa the yield is the same so it's not that big of a deal it's just an interesting crop to to do because it's different. Okay, so if I can get this done by 12:30, which is in the next 12 minutes, which shouldn't be an issue, I think we're all set on the rain. Fingers crossed. Now I just got to remember where I parked the Volvo truck, but we'll find it, and we'll have to grab the logging trailer, go pick up the logs, and we'll sell those. That should easily get us back over 100,000. At least I think it will. I think I cut down enough trees. If only, uh, like I said, I've had farmers watch me do this when I talk about the alfalfa and clover is only a, a, a one harvest crop. Yeah, they're a little confused why they made it that way, but yeah, I'm not too sure either. I think what they might be doing is they might be taking like a canola and modding it off like canola, because that's what it kind of looks like when canola flowers a little bit. Maybe in the future they'll change it on up, but for now it's just a one one harvest per season. Oh yeah, and someone did ask, why do I keep using the Kubota set? Uh, a couple reasons. The horsepower requirement is what we can use. Uh, two, it's financially the best option for us as well. So that's about the only reason why we keep using the Kubota set. We ever do, and I assume at some point we shall, you know, get a track with a little bit more horsepower. We can always go with different mowers. I don't think we'll ever get to the Royal BM on the series. I don't think we'll need it. I mean, if I just keep doing the two fields, the Clover and Alfalfa fields that we're doing, the Royal BM is just uh, the Royal BM. Huh, that's Snow Runner. The big Corona M is just a little bit uh, too big for what we're doing. And of course, that would cost in the sales store like two hundred thousand dollars, probably. Whereas these mowers, when they never come up for sale, I can get them for probably a total of forty-five, fifty thousand combined. And really, the Royal BM, even though it's a nice machine, you don't need another you know, tractor to mow. It's also, the working width is good, but it's not the widest working width for mowers either. I feel like I'm going to be just near the end of finishing this uh, clover field before the rain hits.
So it looks like the weather is going to hold off just enough. I'm trying to figure out what would be worth it for a farmer. Would you wait? Would you, you know, if the grass is dry and you want to turn it to hay, but you know it's going to rain later on, would you still cut the grass just before a rainstorm, or would you rather wait for the rainstorm to pass? Then you got to wait for the grass to dry, then cut the grass, and then give it a couple days to dry that way. Or would you cut it before it rained? I'm thinking you'd probably wait. But then again, I'm not a real farmer, so I don't know. And I don't really ever pay attention to the farmers around me, what they do either. So, But there is our... This is the Cloverfield, right? Yeah, Clover. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off that mower, turn off that mower. Uh, we'll just double check the store. Last I checked, nothing was in it. But now we got ourselves a potato planter, which is nothing that we're looking for. Uh, let's go into mowers. And we're going to return the, the front mower. But we're going to keep the rear one for now, right? Because that leaves me just two items. So that leaves me the third one, which I need the water tanker for. Uh, watch the water tanker come up for sale. But if it does, that's uh, even better. Uh, the rear mower... I'm just going to leave the 8230 parked here for now. Actually, no. Uh, what I should be doing. I need to go back to the cow barn, and that would be a good place to put the butterfly mower anyways. Because the next time I use it, fingers crossed, would be at the big grass field that we haven't purchased yet. But I need to grab the forage wagon and head on up to the BGA. Uh, just put some more silage into there. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go grab the logs. Luckily, I looked. And we'll go sell some of those. Hopefully, all of them. Get some money in the bank account. And then we'll have to wait for the rain to stop before we get into a field with the Massey Ferguson narrow tires. And I think we'll spray for some weeds at the end of the day. And don't have that much silage left up here. I thought I actually had more than this, but that's fine. Actually, if I turn this on here... Actually, we still got almost 100,000 liters. So that's almost two full loads. I think the BGA is going to be able to be able to take one anyways. So this will be all gone... By the time the other silage is ready, but we're going to sell that silage straight up, like I said. And that should give us some cash to buy the other grass field, which we, once we get it, uh, soil sampled. Yeah, I'll have to do the soil sampling and everything before I get the mowers back, too. I'll worry about that tomorrow, in the month of May. Let's see, are you going to take all of this? You do, you do. If you don't, you don't. You will eventually. Alright, so you did take all of it. I think it would even be better. But then again, that's it's a we're talking a lot of cash, we have to wait for it to come up for sale is to get the big wheel loader with the 10 uh 10, liter bucket and then we could uh transfer this over that way i wouldn't have to wouldn't need the belt but then again the belt is cheaper than a wheel loader let's try not to pick up the chaff if i can help it A little bit more. There we go. Let's get away from the chaff. So yeah, we definitely want to keep the belt because I need it next month for the other silage. Let me turn that engine off. Every time I get off the belt, I always run the opposite direction that I need to.
did uh, speed up time as well, back up to times five. Because I got everything I, I wanted to get done before the rain came. The glories of time scaling in Farming Simulator. I like how I always leave my 8230 park like that when it's full of silence. <laughs> Just rear wheels off the ground. Uh, yeah, so now I gotta find out because I don't remember. Uh, since we're here, Frank is doing a good job. The corners are fine. Uh, Massey Ferguson, I'll get to you later. Oh, that's right. That's I did leave you here. Let's go back to the farm here. Drop off the low boy, low loader. Grab the logging trailer. And, of course, we just cut trees over the hill. The thing is, when I was cutting the trees, I couldn't remember if it was a 12 or 15 meter long trailer that we have for logs. I could have just actually looked in my inventory and would have said how long it is, but uh, if, the, if the logs don't get picked up, then uh, I'll just cut them again. Yeah, I think people said on the older episodes when I was cutting logs, I think they said six meter logs are what you want to get the best price. Um, but. I'm just cutting them, basically. <laughs> just cutting them on up. That might be a 15 meter. Yeah, this truck was a nice addition. I think when winter comes, if I don't have a trailer by then, we'll probably lease a trailer. And sell all of our grain. Instead of doing it with the current setup that we had. Oh, here comes the rain at 12.54. All right, so let me get into this. HUD. Whoops, uh, HUD was already up. Let's see, I need to switch this on over to. It's a 15 meter, okay. And right now it's currently on the left. This could get a little messy because I'm going up over terrain that normally I don't think you would be with this type of truck that I have. But I've been having a lot of practice picking up logs, I know that much. The stumps are still here as well. Yeah, so I'm going to get stuck on terrain like this. So, <laughs> good times. Uh, wait, am I in the truck? Somehow I got... There we go. Uh, the stump doesn't doesn't help either. Right, let's try to do it without getting stuck. How about that? All right, and now we'll switch over to logs picking up on the right. I think if I, why did that log go way the heck up there? I don't know. Sometimes the auto loader can do some funny things. Let's just toss it over there. And it still wants to pick it up. And why is this log? Why does this log keep wanting to load? And jump to the front, land on the cab. It's trying to kill me. <laughs> that log, for some reason, wants to auto-load up here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, since it's being a naughty log. Let's cut it down here. I don't know where that one went, but it looks like it went to the trailer. It looks like that one went to the trailer. Anything go over? Uh, of course this one did. Going for full realism here, as you can tell. The auto loader turn off. Why that log? I don't know. It just wants to load up in the front. All right, we're gonna let it be. That's where it wants to be. That's fine. All right, that log is loading up correctly. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm even gonna get a full. Whoops, uh, a full trailer. But at least this time delivering the logs, we got the Volvo truck. 
And we don't have the dollies set up on the John Deere's. It looks like uh, Frank has completed planting the sunflowers, which I kind of forgot he was doing that in the rain. I'll have to go back over there after the rain and make sure that's all finished. Uh, why didn't you load? You got a limb on you somewhere? Must be you did. Right, a few more logs to pick up and we can go get ourselves, I'm hoping like 30,000, but I think we're to be under that. Well, we do actually have a full load. Let's go over the railroad tracks, no train coming. And hopefully this uh, does not decide to tip over on me. I do have the straps on, so it's possible, but... I got my finger on the trigger, ready to unstrap them in case the trailer starts doing some weird stuff. Actually, let's speed up some time. I think it's supposed to stop raining... Uh, a little bit after 3 o'clock, so maybe 4 o'clock, somewhere around there. Yeah, I just could, I, when I was cutting down trees, I just kind of knew that I wasn't going to find enough trees to get us back up where we need to be. Although I might be surprised how much I get for this load. I mean, there's a lot of trees on the map, just not currently on the fields that we own to get us up to near 200 grand. This truck is making easy work of these logs. The 8230 didn't have no problem, and I don't think... Did I use the 9RT for transporting logs? I may have. But this is definitely a lot better. And as I said, when winter time comes and we got all that grain to sell, we'll let's get ourselves a nice grain trailer for this, at least. And I think it'll be a lot quicker work. All right, fingers crossed we get like 30 grand for it. That's what we usually get for a decent trailer load. Uh, let's see if I can find the cell trigger which is like right here it's here somewhere <laughs> oh there it is I wasn't close enough well pretty close uh, we'll just say 29,000 but it's 29,000 more than we had before well I want to bring this back to the farm I'll get the Massey Ferguson back to the farm as well I need to put the narrow tires on it, even though technically I don't need them because the crop isn't that tall yet. But once the rain stops, we'll get into the fields at the farmyard and spray those for weeds. Get some of it done, that way I don't have a whole mess of fields to get done in the month of May. Every farmer's dream, changing tires in the rain. Uh, let's go ahead and customize this. And wide tires, standard, oops, narrows. There we go. Narrows. Let's go ahead and customize. Let's go ahead and put the front loader back on, shall we? And let's go get our herbicide and our sea and spot sprayer. I got the uh, speed on the time scale up to 60. It should stop raining, I think, at 4 o'clock. Yep, we'll slow down time. Rain technically has stopped, but still showing as it's raining. Uh, yep, let's, nope, I keep doing that. There we go, pick that on up. And looks like it's going to start raining again at some point. So we got, whoops, uh, we got a brief period of no rain, apparently. It doesn't really matter to me. Too. Well, actually, it's not going to rain until, okay, later on, not until 9 o'clock in the evening.
right, we're gonna we're gonna start spraying anyways. But uh, I did go ahead and finish off the sunflower field. I planted that, so that's all taken care of. Went up to the store and got the remainder of the seed and liquid fertilizer that was left. So that's all taken care of. So once I get these fields sprayed, I am pretty much done for the month other than taking care of the animals. So now we're going to take care of the weeds in the field. At least by getting this done, it's two fields less I'll have to do in the month of May. And we can hire a worker to do the other fields in May while we go ahead and sell the silage. Uh, we'll have some clover and alfalfa to Ted, windrow, and bale on up into hay. The animals will be thankful for that. I'm, I'm down to two bales at the sheep pen. And did we, I think we may have even used all the bales down at the cow barn as well. So, whew, I'll have to see how many bales we make off the clover field. Um, the new grass field, if we do buy tomorrow, which we should be able to. I may have to make some hay bales out of that. Or at least, uh, later on in the year, the small grass field makes some bales out of that. See how it goes. See how the situation is. Never gonna go. The rain has stopped. The sea and spot sprayer. What you really could use on any farm. Instead of using all that herbicide. Now someone did say, I, I think this is true without precision farming. After you get done drilling the field, so before the crop even grows, even before the weeds grow, if you go around and spray with herbicide, this is without precision farming, the weeds won't grow. They said I should do that with precision farming, and I don't think that would work because it wouldn't spray any herbicide because it doesn't actually see any weeds. So I don't know if that would actually work out. And really, if I got to go around, I might as well wait until the weeds actually grow. Because um, you got to go around the field anyways, right? So you're better off just waiting for the weeds to grow. At least that's my opinion anyways. I don't know if anyone's ever done it on precision farming and spraying for weeds before they technically grow. Watch out for that road sign. That road sign hated me back in FS17. I took that down more often than not. And I was surprised the town kept coming over and putting the sign back in. What they probably should have done was move the sign further up the road and, and not where I keep turning around. But the committee, the committee, the committee didn't want to hear about it, so they kept putting the sign right back where it was. So I got some fields that need some lime work done. And of course we'll have some weeds to spray. May is going to be a busy month. We've already sold all the wool. That was last episode. I probably could have sold a little bit more. I'm pretty sure the sheep have maybe made a pallet or so. But we'll just wait. We'll hold on to it. It's not going to benefit us too much by selling what they have. And I could start putting the BGA for the digestate on selling that directly instead of storing it. I don't think I'll get around to ever using it. Since we both got uh, our direct drills both have fertilizer on it. I don't see myself going around fertilizing fields afterwards. I mean I probably could use it on a grass field. Like the clover and alfalfa could probably do it on. But right now, you know, it's, that's another product we're not going to make a whole bunch of money on currently. So we'll keep it on storing. And if an item ever comes up for sale to where I can spray some slurry and I'm not saving up for something else, then we'll look into it. All right, that's the... I forgot what we planted here. It was either wheat or barley, right? I would assume. No, it might be even oats. 
That might be oats here. I haven't bought the, or at least the water tanker for the sheep yet. I'm just waiting out as long as I can in case it comes up for sale. I won't have no problem spending money on that because that thing would only, on sale would only cost me like a couple grand. Even if the uh, big tanker comes up for sale, it's something that we could use. Although I shouldn't have to transport transformer oil for a long time, I think. But the bigger tanker, of course, could do water. I could move the digestate around with it. And also, I wouldn't have to uh, go down to the lake as often as I do to refill up with water. Now, this shouldn't take me too long to get this done. I think this is a 40, 40 meter sprayer, 42 maybe even. So we've been here, it says five years, uh, I think four full years was technically what we've been here. But either way, I think we bought this sprayer like after year one. And I think we filled up with one IBC of herbicide. And we still got, you know, just under 600. So I've used 1,400 liters of herbicide in four years with a seed and spot sprayer. So that's uh, pretty good. It, it will be interesting on American Falls because I'm not running precision farming there. When I start getting into weed spraying and all that, how much material I actually go through. I'm pretty sure I'm going to goof up on that series. Because it's been a while since I've done a map without precision farming. But that series there is says to really um, be carefree. I always I keep wanting to say have fun on, but I have fun on all the maps I play on. Uh, but be more carefree in that map. So that is all the spring done for today, anyways. Actually, I do got some. Is that lime that's here? I think that's lime. Now, technically, the Kubota spreader that we have will do lime as well, but it does go through it rather quickly. Uh, so there is all that. That definitely is lime. Let me zoom on up to the BGA. If I can figure out where the heck I am. There we go. It really hasn't gone through that much, I don't think. Although it's taken more than I thought it would. Okay. Uh, was not expecting that. Let's get the 8230 off its front wheels there. And I'll just park this in one of the bunkers over here. And by noon in the month of May, we should be able to sell all that silage. And, you know, we should be getting money overnight from the power plant. So we should have no problem buying that land tomorrow. And just to refresh our memory, it's 191 and change. 191,784. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a big grass field. We can always change over to something else, but for now, it will be a grass field. Uh, as for our production buildings, just to give you a rough idea what's going on here. So methane, I mean, this number is going up because we're transporting more methane than it's actually using. And yeah, we've, we've used actually a good amount of transformer oil, but not, I mean, more than I thought we would, but it's not like going down rapidly, which is good. And silage. Oh, look at that. We just, we just basically topped it off is what we did. Yeah, we do actually have a good amount of digestate. The good point of this is it will hold six and a half million liters. And if I were to sell the digestate, oh, there is no place to sell digestate on the map, apparently. Well, I mean, I could always change that. But as you can see, the max price, I guess, is $36 per 1,000. So, yeah, not that much. Well, you can see max value. How can you give us a max value of 8,600 when there is no sell point? 
interesting. Maybe the mar maybe the market here knows what it goes for, but yeah, we don't, we wouldn't even get ten grand for it, so not that great of a deal. Uh, what we will be looking for here is the soybeans. We should get about forty some odd thousand dollars when we sell those, and that will be in July. So that's a ways off, but that's still something to look forward to. And everything else is March, January, basically, other than the eggs, which we're starting the chickens are piling up on as well. But uh, yeah, oh, probably one thing I should do is just keep checking on the store. Hey, there's a mower. <laughs> I mean, it is a uh, a two meter wide, so that's not quite what we're looking for. Uh, they keep giving us mowers, but they keep giving us the smallest ones there are, it appears. But you know what? It, it's it's there. They can't they can't say they haven't given us a chance to buy mowers, just not the ones we we're looking for. But definitely need to save up on the cash. But I think. Like I said, we should get like a hundred grand from the silage ish, uh, somewhere around there, and we're making probably like a thousand. So that's like another twelve. So you know, if something comes up for sale, probably like you know thirty or thirty or forty thousand dollars in the store, we should be able to afford to buy that and the land. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But that's gonna do it for today, guys. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you again right here in Goldcrest Valley. But until then, have a good one.